community garden is the consistency of, of going back and forth, um, uh, showing good stewardship of the land. Um, being a part of the community, it, it brings the community together and knits them together in a way that uh, I think it's a good healing uh, medicine to the people. It takes their mind off of things, uh, of the external um, stuff that goes on in their lives and uh, it brings them closer and it centers them and it, it helps us uh, come together. Uh, community garden is great, um, especially when we share uh, community garden. It's bringing in the small ones, it's bringing the old ones in and uh, providing for them and building it so that they can enjoy it. And food sovereignty is when a community does not have to go outside of its boundaries or its borders in order to find food in order to feed itself. You will probably be completely and utterly food sovereign within five years, at least vegetable wise, um, and, you'll, and you'll be able to maintain that. As the ground slept, the students of the Tizza Learning Center joined Sean Wallace of the Mount Cray Health Center in planning the fourth annual Lilwat Community Garden. Tools, soil, and seeds were gathered to get ready for the spring. Master gardeners were identified, and some of these experts offered workshops to share their knowledge with the community. Mama and Daddy, Matthew Kaka, grew gardens, and they not only helped our family, but other families. That's how the carrot seed is growing. So now as they're turning brown is what you're looking for. When they turn brown and they start drooping down like this, then that's when you're going to be cutting them off in a paper bag or a plastic bag or a container because if you can cut them off and even tap them like this, they just go psh, and they go everywhere, right? So you're going to The workshops them. provided a forum to share knowledge, pique the interest of the Lutlet people, the and foster a community of gardeners. And that's really what it's all about is helping each other and that's why I say very important for us as First Nations to deal with ourselves, to get a hold of that agriculture and, and expand it because we need that. We need more land based for agriculture here. Our traditional licorice for flavoring. In early spring, the Tazil Learning Center students made preparations for early planting. Right now I feel, I feel good. I don't know whose these are, but, you know, we're just taking care of them. We're building a greenhouse for the community. As the snow melted, the Lilwet people prepared to garden beds for planting. So you have a, a group of um, nitrogen rich plants and they're called pulse plants. So you've got beans and peas and clover and alfalfa and a whole group of legumes that give nitrogen back to the soil. Then you have a whole bunch of nitrogen robbing plants tomatoes being one of the worst ones because wherever you plant a tomato you are not going to be able to grow a tomato in that same spot for five years unless you dig all that soil out at about two feet and replenish it all. So you really have to be on your amendment, soil amendments. There are some things that you can do that can create a little bit more heat in your beds and roots love heat. They, that tells them it's spring and it's time to get going and grow. Number one, alfalfa meal, because it's a huge nitrogen fix. So when you're creating your beds in the spring, you'll do your layers and you'll do about a three to six inch layer first, then spread by hand, and then put another good three to six inch layer on. Toss, toss, toss with alfalfa meal. Put six inches of your really good quality soil on. Take your alfalfa meal again. Toss, 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 rake it in. Let it rest for about mm, three to six weeks before you plant anything in it. By late spring, the garden was filled with plants that the students started from seed. It was working side by side that friendships were formed and knowledge passed between people. Thistles in the springtime, you can eat the tips, break them off, 
and they taste like peas. As the sun rose higher in the sky, the garden thrived and we worked to keep the weeds out. Our friends at the Wilderness Foundation helped to complete the fence and to install the gate to keep out the hungry herbivores. The taller garden beds and birch bark pathways helped to make the garden accessible to all. As the plants continued to produce vegetables into the fall, the community continued to work in the garden. As part of their training, the Blade Runners graciously built a shed to store our tools. The people of Mount Curry came together to harvest the garden's fresh vegetables. Many were fed with our bountiful harvest. Nature did its work already. Taste. Yeah. yeah, it has a lemonade scent. Yeah, I think that's nice. Oh, that's nice. Community kitchens were held to celebrate our accomplishments and enjoy the fresh, healthy food from our garden. As we harvested the garden, Martina Pierre, a respected elder and Uchomuch language expert, used games and laughter to teach us Uchomuch gardening words. This year we had a bumper crop of tomatoes, so we followed the traditional ways of our Lilwat people in preserving our food to last throughout the winter. One expert canner provided a workshop to teach us how to can food. In Shasta Folk Math and Scratchita, Samus and Scratchita Holly Joseph. I am a student at Tizil Learning Center and I'm teaching canning salsa. I learned to can from my mom and we can different berries and fruit all throughout the year, whatever was in season and at the end of the summer we can fish. That was just our way of life. It helps to make and meat. The Lilwat Community Garden Project enhanced the important traditions of our elders who worked together throughout the seasons to provide a sustainable and healthy food source for the families as well as strengthened our language and community ties. Homemade salsa, mmm. <laughs>